So, today is the 38th day. We are very close to the end. And in order to complete the entire 40 days, we have to master our tshuva. Now, the end of the 40 days is that we are commemorating the destruction of the temple, which really what was going on at the, t at the time of the destruction of the temple is called the Bizayon. Bizayon is a disgrace because the holy temple was destroyed, the Kodesh of Kodeshim were destroyed, the, everything that was there was, uh, was uh, bashed, broken, burned down. This is a Bizayon, a disgrace to Hashem. And mainly to us, because we allowed it to happen, and uh, we caused it to happen, not anything else. So we want to focus on one little thing here to take on ourselves, because there are many ways to do tshuva. When we're going to finish these 40 days, we're going to go into a new 40 days, and we're going to address it as the 40 days of tshuva. So what's going to happen is we're going to take now a short break, between these 40 days till Rosh Chodesh Elul, where it's Ben Azmanim, it's a good time, it's a auspicious time, where we're going to learn a lot of uh, different books to acquire a lot of uh, tools. We're going to start learning Tomer Dvora, Sharei Kedusha, Orchot Tzadikim. There's a lot of books that I want to go through that will give us a lot of tools to really uh, master what we need to do for Tshuva. And then Rosh Chodesh Elul, we go into a 40 days of Slichot, we're going, we're starting another 40 days. They will call it a tshuva boot camp, where we're going to go every day learning how to do tshuva, because very few people know how to do tshuva. But that's not what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about something that is connected to the last days of our 40 day journey, to the destruction of the temple and to our own tshuva. It says in the holy books, Ikar ha the main part of the tshuva, Yekabel bizyono veishtok. Accept your, somebody putting you to shame and that you say, stay quietly. And that's not an easy thing when somebody disgraces you, somebody embarrasses you, somebody uh, puts you to shame. This is called the bizayon. And it says, Ikara tshuva, that when a person, yekabel bizyono, accept it, idom, be quiet, veishtok. And, be, and don't answer back. Now, if you're lucky, if you're lucky, then people will come and insult you in public and do many other things as, as so. There's a very famous story. I think it's the time of the Ramchal. I don't remember exactly the details, but there was a very great rabbi in a big community. And uh, one time, while he was giving a Dvar Torah or class, somebody came in and really insulted him in front of everybody. Came out, came out at him and bashed him in front of everybody. Big chief rabbi of the city. And a very great scholar. And of course he didn't say anything. The next day the rabbi goes to his home with a box full of uh, sweets and treats and uh, wine and fruit and tells him, I can't thank you enough for what you did yesterday. And the guy's like, excuse me? Are, are you serious? He's like, listen, I'm a big rabbi. Everybody respects me. Nobody ever dared to insult me. Nobody ever, nobody ever dared to, to embarrass me. No, nobody ever dared to, to answer back to me. And you, Thank you for giving me such a zchut, such an honor that you came and insulted me standing in front of everybody. You gave me the biggest zchut. I can't thank you enough for doing that because nobody ever did that to me. Now, this is, uh, you might not, didn't get yet to that uh, zchut that somebody will come and insult you in front of many. And sometimes you go through this uh, embarrassing uh, uh, moments every day. If you have in your life many embarrassing moments that you don't know what to do with yourself from the shame, then don't be upset at the one who does that. Go and buy them some presents the next day because Hashem decided to give you the opportunity to be insulted, to be embarrassed, to be accused in something. Ikar ha the main part of the tshuva. Yekabel bizyono, accept what it said to you. Idom, you don't say anything. They shtok, and you don't retaliate. You don't answer back. 
And on that, our sage says, you wash off all your sins. Why am I saying it two days before uh, Tisha B'Av? Because that was a bizayon for us. Can you imagine the disgrace? The chosen people, Ha'aman Ivchar, that we are brought into the land of Israel, build Bet HaMikdash, we are the elite of the elite, and then we get a slap to the face by the master of the universe. And even the ones who came to destroy the temples, they knew that we did wrong, and they are just being the messengers to destroy. That was a bizayon. Now, we're not going to talk about Tisha B'Av and the destruction. I'm talking about my own tshuva, because for me to become a 100% uh, vessel of Hashem, a uh, clicky bull, uh, a, a vessel that can accept from the Kadosh Baruch I have to be so humble, so low level, but not in my, <coughs> not in my spiritual level, but accepting such a thing and not, not getting affected. And you see that Moshe Rabbeinu was insulted in front of everybody. Korach came and insulted him. Didn't do anything. David HaMelech was insulted in front of everybody. Didn't do anything. How many times we saw situations in, the, in, the, in our history that somebody was insulted and didn't say nothing. Why? Because that, that's the Ikar Tshuva. Accept it. Just know that it's coming from Hashem. It's coming to clean you. It's coming to test you if you will react. And if you don't react, don't think... A lot of people say, If you don't answer, it's like as if you admit. In this particular case, you worry about your cheshbon with the Kadosh Baruch You worry about what's between you and Hashem, not between you and other people. If you need to admit or don't need to admit. And just remember, have it engraved in your, in your mind. Ikara tshuva, the main part of the tshuva. There's many things that we need to do tshuva for, but ikara tshuva, yekabel bizyono, accept it. Somebody will insult you in front of everybody or come and prove you wrong or something. Doesn't matter right now if it's wrong or not, it's irrelevant. Yidom, don't, don't, don't react, no reaction. Just take a deep breath, vishtok, and don't do after that because sometimes people say, now I'm going to be quiet. Tomorrow I'm going to come and I'll show him what it means to come and insult me like that. Yidom vishtok. That's Ikara Tshuva, and that's one of the most important part of me bowing down to Hashem, is to be embarrassed, to be proven, because I'm not perfect, I'm far from being perfect. There will be a day that there will be fingers pointed at me on bad things that I did in, in the heavenly court, unless I do serious Tshuva. But in this world, it's a very high level. If even Rabbi Nachman from Breslev says, if a person goes through such a bizayon, he can count on that, that a lot of his sins are going to be washed off just because of that moment of being embarrassed. And so much more so, the greater you are and the embarrassment is greater, just bow down and be very happy that the Kadosh Baruch allowed this to happen. And have this constantly, we talked about a few days ago, Shiviti Hashem Amit, constantly have Hashem in front of you, have this in front of you, wait for the moment that you're going to be embarrassed. Instead of getting upset, inside... Jump from joy. And then if you want, the next day bring a present to the person who did that to you. Definitely don't be upset at the person. Don't be judgmental. Don't have anger. And wait for the moment that somebody comes and insults you. And remember, when you do that, then you are humbling yourself to such a high level. Like Moshe Rabbeinu, David HaMelech, many others. Look at our leaders. Avraham Avinu says, I am a nothing. I'm like dust in the ashes. Moshe Rabbeinu says, I'm a, I'm a nothing. David HaMelech, I'm a worm, I'm not even a human. The more you diminish yourself, some people on, on purpose they do that. But we were reading the whole month, hopefully you continue reading, Rambam, the letter of the Rambam, and he says, Make yourself humble and a nothing, Kadosh Baruch will elevate you to a high level. And that's our goal, to be elevated to a highest level, so I can become a hundred percent an Eved Hashem. A hundred percent bow down to the Kadosh Baruch so the Kadosh Baruch can start operating through me and fulfill my mission in this world so I can do my responsibility and my job in this world and hopefully reach to a high level of tshuva that I leave this world with my hands are clean. My hands are clean. Of, I, did, I did tshuva and my heart is clean. Needless to say, to reach to the highest of most places of tshuva. Nezad Hashem, wait for the moment. If you want, I'll insult you in public if you want. I will charge a, a short price for that. A small price and I'll go and insult you whenever you want. 
I'm just joking, of course. But uh, don't, uh, some things we don't, we pray for them not to happen. Don't bring me to a test. For that, you can ask Hashem. Yeah, I want to be insulted in public. I want to see if, I'm, uh, if I can handle that. And I had a few situations in the past that somebody came and threw a missile at me. And it was, it's not an easy test not to react. It's just to accept it when everybody's looking at you, especially if you're being blamed for something embarrassing. Now the thing is that, I'm just going to say it as a note because I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of comments. If somebody comes and calls you a child molester and you're not, then you're going to prove yourself. You don't say, good, thank you for embarrassing me. So certain things, you know, in Hebrew we say, lechol klal klal. Every rule, there's an exception. Somebody comes and tells you you are a murderer, or a child molester, or a rapist, you need to clean your name. You can't walk around the city, everybody thinking you are a molester. Unless chas v'shalom you are, and then you have a serious problem. Then you deserve that. But if you're not, these are things that you can't just accept the bizayon, and say like, okay, <laughs> good, I was embarrassed. So um, what I'm saying now is, oh, everything that I say is be'eravon mugbal, everything has an exception. Don't take always my words. Some people take the word, they nail it to the wall, and that's it. And they, they, they twist what I say. I'm just saying in most cases. Because Allah Hashem, Mehmet Hashem should allow us to do a high-level tshuva and clean ourselves moments before Mashiach is coming. <laughs>